What's going on guys? It's Eric here again. Um, so I want to make this video here. This might be a little bit of a tiny bit longer in, uh, video that I do for you because what I'm trying to do here in this video real quick for you guys is to kind of show you how I'm able to play the alerts and how I pick and choose which ones to trade and which ones to just leave alone and move on to the next one. Okay. Um, so this one might be a little bit more in depth of how I do things. Of course, you can, you know, cater it to your own style. You don't have to follow me, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of how I'm able to, you know, get the alerts, look at the alerts and say, okay, this is the one I'm going to trade. This is why I'm going to trade it. So this is going to be very, very important for those of you who are, you know, maybe even starting out um, or just some of you who might be curious as far as how the alerts work, um, you know, and, and kind of go from there. Okay. But we're going to jump right into it. I know it's been really, you know, a really hot market the last week or so, you know, coming off probably one of my strongest weeks uh, ever. Um, yesterday was great. Today wasn't so great, but I had a lot of things going on outside of trading. Um, today, you know, I'm dead tired, <laughs> to be honest, which I haven't slept in a, a, since, what, Sunday? Man, I'm losing my, losing my time <laughs> already. But I wanted to get this video out here for you guys so you can kind of take a look at it um, and have something to look forward to this week. Today, you know, the market wasn't as hot as the last few days because it looks like, I guess, that, you know, CPI index that was announced kind of shook the market up a little bit. Everybody's worried about this inflation. Um, so today, you know, Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, they all finished in the red. I think the Russell 2000 did too. Um, so it wasn't a good day overall in the market, but we had a lot of hot plays today. Even though the market was red, we had a lot of greens um, when it came to the alerts. So, you know, thanks to the admins for those. Um, but anyways, guys, let's kind of jump into it here real quick. We're going to go over some of these alerts from yesterday and from today. Okay. So we kind of get a gist of everything. So let's kind of take a look at everything here. Um, obviously, this was pretty much... The watch list for Monday morning. We all know SGOC took off. I traded that bad boy twice, and all these other ones were hitting as well too. So, if you're not familiar with how the alerts work, I usually set out the watch list, you know, the night before, so you guys can be prepared in the morning and start looking at stuff in pre-market and being ready. Um, again, you play that how you play it. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you my insight on how I look at things in the market. All right. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what happened there. Um, and then, you know, one of the first alerts was SGOC crossing the VWAP. Um, let me see if I can pull that up for us here on the chart. So you guys can kind of get a sense of why I, you know, trade it. Now understand this, guys. When I'm trading my trades, when I'm placing my trades, and what I'm looking for, it's pertaining to my own strategy, okay? It's one, it's just a strategy that works for me as a trader. It's not the same as any other traders that you might, you know, know. But even if you do try to, you know, even mimic my trades or copy my trades, um, I mean, I, I want you to. I mean, that's great. But understand, don't use it as a reliability for you to profit and make money because you trading by your hand using my technique is not going to work for you because you won't be able to see the things that I see or anticipate what I anticipate because you might not either have the level, level of knowledge or the level of, uh, you know, risk management tolerance. Um, and even psychologically, we, mo we both might be feeling different things about a stock. Um, so this is why I tell you guys it's good to cater your trading style um, you know, towards how the alerts will work for you. Um, the good thing about the, the alerts that they're universal, they'll work for anyone. You just got to have yourself a trading style. If you find yourself consistently losing, it's probably because you haven't developed a trading style, which needs to fit with how you trade. And I go over all that stuff with you in that little course. I mean, if you, even if you don't want to take the course, guys, I, everything is laid out for you in the learning lounge. And I even got a lot of the files in the Facebook group for free for you to go and, you know, study I mean, there's a, a lot of good material in there. Look at that stuff, study that stuff, and practice that stuff. Practice, practice, practice. It's going to make it perfect. But um, anyways, that's my little two cents on that. If you find yourself, you know, losing, it's because of something like that. But anyways, message me. We can talk about it. But let's get into this trade. So SGLC from Monday. Boom. Cross VWAP. This is when the alert went off. Yeah, all this ability to make money. And you guys know I did. Now, what did I look for? What made me decide to jump in this? As opposed to maybe get into a AHL, I did get in TPST as well too. So uh, I, I just missed XCLA. That thing's been going. It's it's been going for the last two days. I mean, these these alerts are, are crazy. But everyone has their own trading style. Some some traders are in this thing, you know, or some of these alerts still. So everyone is you know doing well. If you're not, if you find yourself not doing well, like I said, try to review your trades as much as you can to see what you were doing. See what your entries and your exit was and ask yourself mainly, how were you feeling at the time that you took this trade? Were you nervous? Were you, you know, too nonchalant about it? You let it run and came back and you lost profits. Like what, what happened? You, you can, you can review your trades and ask yourself those questions. You'll be able to start to pinpoint 
where your weaknesses are and improve on them and make yourself a better trader, guys. And this is what I want you to do, um, you know, as much as you can. But let's take a look at what I looked at for SGLC. You guys know my rule on this one. This was already, you know, it popped up. It crossed the moving average twice. That's what I look for. It still held its, you know, bullish position. You guys know me. I'm a bullish trader. That thing shot up during the bell, and I said, yep, I'm getting in, and I got in right in there and rode that bad boy up. Even when it pulled back, it did not do what? What is one of my rules when I'm in the bullish trade? I'm going to wait for the break view out to start to feel like I need to exit. It never did. And you know what? It continued to rise, and guess what? Major profits. You guys seen the results in the Facebook group? If you didn't, go in the Facebook group. Look at the previous post. I'm posting the profits and all that stuff in there. You got time to look at it. Just scroll on down through the timeline. I don't, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. But that was SGLC. Let's take a look at the other one. Let's take a look at AEHL. And this is today's the 13th, so that's over there. And this is yesterday, the 12th. So. Why would I not trade this one when it go off on pre-market? Ask yourself. Will the average just cross twice? That's something I'm looking for to see if there's a setup coming. There's no setup here. This thing is just topping up and bottoming down at this point. Moving average doesn't change. Especially when the when the MACD just lasts this long. I'm I'm not gonna look I'm not gonna bother looking at this. By the time it gets like right here and it's still staying red, I'm pretty much not gonna look at it until I get an alert that it's crossing over VWAP and starting to turn bullish again. That's just me. I don't I don't really trade the Avalanche strategy that much because just as quickly as stocks can rise, they can fall. And just as quickly as they fall, they can shoot up and rise uh, for no reason. So anyways, but there was no setup here. So that's why I didn't look at AEHL. Closest thing you could probably see to a setup is a small flag, but there's there's not even no pole, so it's not really a flag. You understand that? If you don't, go back and look at the other videos. I talk about doing bear flags and bull flags all the time, okay? But there's no trade here. This was just alerted because it had a significant price change and it was starting to gain some movement and traction, but the traction isn't there. So you move on, you go to the next one. All right. So let's take a look at what other stocks went off at that time frame. XELA. <laughs> XELA. So this was today. Thing made a move today. That thing was climbing today. But well, let's go back to the 12th here. Free market, it went off. Hit a pre-market high, which is probably right here when it went off. Yep, that's exactly when. So there, moving average just crossed. Now you're like Eric, hey, it's kind of a bull flag, right? It looks something like you know, it's holding support right there on the moving average when it's red, like you look for. And then it even broke out. Why didn't you trade this? Why didn't you trade this? Look at this, look at this, guys. There's no there's no price action here, especially in pre-market. You gotta be looking at level two. Why? Because that's gonna let you know if there's gonna be, you know buys and sells going on throughout the pre-market. You got to you gotta know the time frame that you're trading into. And I break down those time frames for you in that trade. Again, I'm not, I'm, I mean, in the course, I'm not going to go in detail with this. I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg of telling you guys what I look for. I explained all that stuff before. So if you have any questions on that, go look at the, the courses and all that stuff. But here you could tell that there's not much action going on, even though it's, it's popped up, it's formed a little bit of a, of a chart. It did all the technical things, but that that's not all I'm looking at. There's there's a variety of things that I'm checking off on my list before I decide to jump into a trade. Okay. Um, we'd probably be here all day if I go through the checklist, but it's at least a good five or six, seven things that I'm looking at um and considering before I jump into trade. I mean, it's probably more than that now that I think about it um as I go through. But anyways, it's all in the courses. Uh, I break it down and upload it every day. But anyways, go through that part right here and you'll see that there is no action happening on volume two. It's a good move, but if I placed an order, how long would it take to get filled? You know, ask yourself that. Even if it's not much price action, it's probably going to take a while or not get filled at all because no sellers are going to want to sell to you at that price or no buyers are going to want to buy from you from that price. It's just how it works. All right. But anyways, throughout the throughout the market, obviously, throughout the day, here to here, it's going to make some good moves because the market's open. You got more buyers and sellers and, you know, the chart's a little bit more full. Not enough value for me to play with, but hey, if you're into that thing, by all means, make your money. All right. But anyways, that's that one. Let's take a look at another one I made money on, which was TPST. Oh, yeah, I got in that bad boy quick. Now, this is another one of my trading strategies. I didn't trade it today. Where, what day was it? The 12th. Yeah, another one of my trading strategies, like I said, I use because um, I, I mainly try to trade 
three to four different trading strategies that I, you know, customize for myself, but I don't like to try new things without testing them first. And these are just the ones that I've tested over the years that I felt more comfortable with. Okay. But let's take a look at this real quick here. TPST, it had a quick volume spike at 27.90, which was around this area when it went off. Now, this strategy that I did here, I think this was my, it was either my wave ride strategy or the, yeah, I think it was a wave, wave ride strategy, I think you want to call it. Anyways, um, I got strategies going for each direction up and down um, that I use. But here, when I took this trade, guys, this was a more higher risk trade that I took. And when, when I'm taking a higher risk trade, I'm going to shoot for smaller losses because I'm not going to take that chance. That's just me personally. Um, but the reason why I said this was high risk, because when this alert went off, I looked at that volume two. I remember this yesterday. I looked at the volume two pre-market and it had a lot of buy orders. So I jumped in on it um, and I got in on it at a good price because it went all the way up to like 40 something. And I sold right at, right a little bit before the sell button hit um, or popped up. Um, and normally, like I said, I wait for, you know, the moving average to change twice, but it didn't because that wasn't part of that strategy. When I do this strategy here, I'm looking to get in and out. And it's harder to do in pre-market because there's not a lot of orders coming through. And it's just a whole thing with level two. I go into the course and all that stuff, but I'm not going to discuss that. But it's just much harder to, to wait for a setup when you're doing that um, in pre-market. But if it's there, it's pretty much going to be there. Um, so, yeah, I just did my VWAP strategy on that. Got in, got out. And that's pretty much how I profited off of that one. Um, but yeah, so this was just one that I got in. Now, let's say if you're a new person and you're focusing on one strategy, what I, which is what I encourage you guys to do, just focus on one trading strategy and trying to develop that. Um, don't try to do everything at once. It's just going to lead you to a dead end and a waste of time. It's going to take you longer to even make money. Okay, so just try to focus on one thing at a time. Had I just been focusing on one of my main strategies that I do, I wouldn't have took this trade. But again, I've been doing this for years and I, you know, know that the strategy that I was going to do is going to work. But um, yeah, I would have took this trade if I was doing another strategy because there's no setup here. And the volume was very, very choppy. After that initial spike, it's like everything just died out. But I mean, it, it, it you know, if you plan on shorting it, you would have been in the money. <laughs> so that's, you know, up to you and your prerogative. But anyways, so that was TPST. So that's another way to, you know, avoid or decide to get into and out of the trade. You got to know what strategy you're going to trade. And in a microsecond, you got to know what your risk management is going to be. You got to know when you're going to enter, when you're going to exit. Because had I not, let's say I had, had I been greedy and tried to, you know, take this thing to the moon, I would have lost all that. Because, you know, if I got in right here, Let's say I would have tried to hell, hell, oh, just praying and hoping, praying and hoping. This thing just dropped all day. I would have lost money. But I didn't because I had a plan, had an entry, had an exit. I wasn't getting greedy because I know for a fact that another trade is going to come, guys. That the, the FOMO that a lot of you are experiencing that you all message me about, like, oh, I didn't want to miss the trade or I don't want to miss this opportunity. There's no such thing. There will always be another opportunity in the market unless the entire world decides to stop you know, exchanging goods and services in the world, you're, you're going to always have an opportunity to, to capitalize on something in the market. You just need to focus on your trading, your setup, stop rushing things. And I've had to tell that to a lot of you guys recently, but I guess because of the market's getting high, you guys are getting anxious to make money. The money's going to come as a result of what you're doing. Okay. So understand that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that trade. Uh, let me see if there was another one. I mean, there was, there was a lot of good alerts coming through. Um, and you guys had ample opportunity. SVI was pretty good. Again, SGOC was coming up throughout the throughout the day. Oh, SBC, I'm just so disappointed in them. I mean, hopefully you guys did what I told you to do. I'm not in that trade. I haven't been in that trade since I told you guys to exit on Friday. Take your money before the launch. But if you are, hopefully you, you got out because that thing is down in like the 30s now. <laughs> um, yeah. But again, flex your diamond hands if you want, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's take a look at it. Let's, let's, let me just pull up C. I think that was another good one. So, I, I mean, that didn't go off today, but I think the other day it was pretty doing pretty well towards the end of the day, which was right here. Yeah, where it started to pick up. Ample opportunity there. You, you know, moving averages change. It, it held right here. That's going to be my level of support that I'm going to judge my risk management on. Let that thing ride and then, you know, exit when you got a target plan. That's a good one to $2 moves. Stop trying to shoot for the moon, guys. Measure your risk to reward accordingly. And you can watch 
the stock. You don't need to, as soon as the alert goes off, you don't need to jump into it. That makes no sense. I am telling you, when the alert goes off, when it first goes off, even when it starts to go off and you start to see things like, you know, the little emojis with the fire here and you, you know, you see it throughout that, you know, that whole time frame. Oh, it's happening again. It's happening again. That means that the stock is just, you know, picking up momentum, guys. That doesn't mean that jump in because, for example, I'm just using this as an example. Let me go back to SGOC so that'll help you guys understand that. And I'm not just going to give this to the chat room. I need all you people who are, even if you're not even in a, a member, you need to know this. But let's say the alert goes off and you see that this thing is, you know, it's going, it's saying, hey, SGOC at, you know, $17, $18, $19, $20. And you pull that stock up. And this is all happening in real time while you're, you know, you pull the stock up and it's not even moving. Or even if it's like in this area here. Let me make this a little bit more real for you guys. Let me do that. All right. <clears throat> all right. So let me play this real quick so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's say, boom, real time, right? Okay, the alert goes off. Let's just speed up a little bit. It says, oh, SGOC is at 22. It's at 23. It's 24, 25. It keeps going. It keeps going. You don't pull this stock up. Why would you get into it right now? It's running. Do you see a setup? No. If you can't see anything, if you not see nothing that fits your strategy, guys, don't trade it. You know? Yeah, it's running. It's running. You, you want to get on a pullback, right? Do you see a pullback at this point? No, there isn't. Now it's starting to pull back. The moving average is showing you, hey, this is, you know, probably a low point. A lot of you probably would get in right here and then start to get suckered in and it starts to go down and it starts to go down. Why? Because you just wanted to rush in and jump. It happens all the time. So anyways, let me speed that up for you here. I think I actually close it. But yeah. Now let's let's take a step back here. Let's say if you wanted to trade this stock. And I'm just giving this as an example, guys. Let's just say the alert went off saying, you know, this part has already passed, right? The alert goes off again right here saying, hey, SGOC is at 23, 24, 20. At, from here, you've seen that it's broken. It's high, right? So, you know, and you guys know me, I like to look at the breakouts. Would you get in right here? Probably because you know, one, you should know that a setup is already formed. It's already breaking in. So buyers are going to be coming in at this point. You can quickly get in, shoot for a target of a dollar or two and, you know, get out. If you want to be greedy and ride the rest, you can. However, you want to start to move your stop loss up or take some profit. Now, if I'm getting in at this point, look how far you are from over from being over the, the VWAP. Not only that, too, remember your relative strength index is showing you that you might be overextended. And obviously, you know what the moving average is saying that it's going to turn. So even if you took the chance of getting in and getting here and getting in and taking some and getting out, that's fine. But even at this point, if you were holding and holding and holding, one, you should know that the change is coming. So are you going to panic sell and drop it because you think a trend is changing? Maybe if that's your risk tolerance. If not, that's fine. But another thing too, you know, look at your indicators. They're helping you, you know, decide on what to do. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, you know, whatever your rule is for your entries and exits, it's fine. For me, like I say, you know, once, I, once it breaks VWAP, I know I'm getting out. So I'm making sure my stop loss is, is near that area. And obviously with this stock here, if you had got in and held it for that long and it broke VWAP right here, you probably should be getting out because obviously you know that it's bearish. There's a lot of, you know, sell signals and the relative strength is not even going up. So, I mean, there's just so many indicators and things that you can do as far as your strategy to understand when you need to get in and get out of a stock or whether you should be trading it at all. I know I'm going over a lot in this video. Of course, I break this down a lot more in the courses for those of you who need a quick shortcut to understand all this stuff. But. This is just the gist of things of what you need to understand as you're trading these alerts. Okay. The alerts just tell you where to go. They're not going to tell you what to do. You got to know what to do and you should know that as a trader. All right. Um, and obviously, you know, there's things like the halts that are far, far annoying. I think, I think NBA, did we trade? I think I traded that one too. Let me look at that one real quick. Oop, typed that wrong. MDA. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, that was a beautiful trade, too. Easy setup. Just look at this, guys. I mean, look at this chart alone here. The candles are thick. I know it went off probably around somewhere in this area here in the beginning. 
But anyways, even if you want to start from the beginning again, let me let me see if I can actually let's let's get this down to the T because y'all think I'm playing, man. I'm telling you, like the alerts are there for you for a reason, man. Let me pull up the where did MDA go? Was that even on the watch list? Four four dollars and ninety four cent. That's when it went off at six thirty nine, which is nine thirty nine, which is freaking early as heck that you guys had to look at this. So this was today, and this was yesterday. I'm going off of the, obviously the yesterday alert because that's when it was alerted. We traded yesterday at nine. What did I say? It went off nine thirty nine. Yep, nine thirty nine. Probably had like no volume at that time. It went off right around here, I believe. But anyways, it might have been right. Oh, my fault. It was right here when it started to pick up some steam. And so it's not like you don't have ample time to wait for a setup too, guys. Um, yeah, so it looks like pretty much in this area is where it did. July 12th, 939. Yep, pull it up, pulls up. All right, so obviously it's not it's crossing over the VWAP and the, and the uh, EMA is you know they're crossing. I love I love it when it crosses because that's like a good indicator. But anyways, let's not get into all that. But anyways, um, yeah, you get in again. This thing got halted. Let me show you. It got halted and halted and halted. This thing was halted like a lot. It was a lot of halts going on the other day. That shit was crazy, man. It was just wild. SEOC was halted. See, MGA across. So yeah, so like it's telling you like, hey, it's seven, seven fifty, all that good stuff. When you start to see that stuff, you know, happen and it's going on fire, you can quickly jump in if you want to. Yeah, understand that. As soon as you jump in, guess what it's gonna do? Pull right back down. So if you, even if you plan on trying to get in on a run and catch it on a run, make sure you understand that hey, this thing can drop immediately because a lot of them do that. Let's, for example, take. Well, hold on, let me finish what I was talking about here. Um, yeah, just waiting for a setup, guys. Just waiting for a setup. Period. Point blank period. It's gonna pull back. But you know my strategy, that volume weighted average price is in drop. I'm gonna keep hanging on to it. That's why I'm getting these gains. I'm using momentum stocks. It's really not that hard once you practice this over and over and over and you're fine tuning the points you need to refine in your trading strategy. And I go over all that stuff with you. Um but yeah, that's just it. I'm just I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. I mean, there's ample of reason to get into this trade. Not only is you know there's volume there so i know that this thing is catching movement a halt lets me know that a lot of people are looking at it you should know that right off the right off the bat whether you want to trade it up or trade it down doesn't matter you see setups are coming up here obviously it's stair stepping you know the abcd pattern is clearly there um i mean you have tons of tons of you know identifiers to say hey this stock is worth getting into it if it pulls back here and it's holding right here and it's telling me to buy again i know that the moving average is changing so i know it's going to start heading green I'm going to jump in. I mean, it's just it's simple things. I mean, they're trying to make trading almost, you know, giveawayable at this point. With all the tools that you guys have, you just got to practice it. Um, like Waffle, I think that one was alerted. See, it's crap like that. And obviously, this is a Chinese stock. We all know Waffle and EEIQ are like worth nothing. Hit a high day at 809 or 890. That means this thing just jumped up. Was it? It might have been this day. Twelve. Yeah. Was it that day or was it this day? Anyways, but look at this stock, guys. When a when the stock gets alerted, more than likely it's done something like this. Let me close this out. It shot up, and now the alert system is telling you, look at this stock. It's going to do something. What it's going to do is up to you and you as a trader to know what to look for. The reason why, again, I don't jump in right away and I wait for at least a changeover too, because a lot of these times these stocks will go whoop, right back down to where it started. Whoop, right back down to where it started. Do you see it? Whoop, even worse than when it started. Happens more often than not. Okay? And these are just little spikes that these, that these stocks are going through. If you don't see movement coming in that stock, leave it alone. Move on to the next one. Point blank period. Okay? So hope this video helped you guys in understanding how to trade the stock alerts. Um, it's giving you an indication on getting into something that's early, but you as a trader need to know what to look for, um, how to conduct a trade. And if you have no type of trading strategy or setup, 
make one. Um, ask some other members in the group, or you know, if you're in the chat room, ask some of those members. Um, if you're, you know, if you're not, busy, you can message me. I don't have no strategies for you. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna add, more than likely ask you about yours and what what it is you do during it to help you, you know, correct what you might need to do during your strategy. Um, or, I mean, if you're in the, if you have the course, there's, you know, tons of strategy in there. There's the, the section on strategies literally gives you a, a handout of 50 different freaking strategies to look at um, and all that good stuff. But anyways, guys, just study up, um, practice, because, you know, it, it gets easier the more you do it. But if you're practicing the wrong things consistently, you're not going to see any improvement. That's just what anything. Um, so just make sure you're having a plan in place because that's where a lot of you are failing you're just running in trying to get a dollar and guess what you got better odds at a casino i'm gonna just tell you the point blank period just you know go to a casino there's no point in doing that or you know if day trading is getting harder for you focus on the swing trades um and if those aren't planning out for you which i don't know why they should and i think only in the last month or so only maybe one swing trade didn't work out well um all the other ones have been hidden. Had you did what I said on the swing trade and, you know, looked at the plan that I was laying out and maybe mimicked that or, you know, did something similar to it, the stocks were trading exactly the way I was saying that they were going to trade. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. I got to get this watch list together for you guys so we can get it out tomorrow. I'm personally going to finally get a little bit of sleep. I don't have to travel again for another two weeks three weeks maybe thank god you get a little break <laughs> i love traveling and trading but it's only but so much you can do you know um but anyways stay tuned i got some more stuff coming up for you guys that are in the group um i'm working with the admins to get some things done for you um i want to start doing stuff like this every day where some of you can you know even watch me trade live and all that good stuff when i have time but the only problem is the computer and you know syncing that stuff up and it messes up my trades while I'm in the trade and all that good stuff. But anyways, we got more things coming for you guys. So just, you know, sit tight, keep making that money. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to message me, um, DM me, post a question in the in the Facebook group. I can easily answer it there too. Um, a lot of you guys, if you're direct messaging me, more than likely your message is getting sent to my spam or junk folder. And if I'm not responding to you, I'm not ignoring you. I just, I'm not getting messages because I'm not looking in that folder. Um, but a lot of, uh, every now and then, like maybe once a month or so, I might go in there and try to clean it out, but <laughs> understand that, um, you know, or, or DM, me, DM me on like another platform on the, on the Instagram or, um, I don't know, TikTok or something. I don't know. Just, just, I don't know. If you have any questions, just try to reach out to me as much as you can, but I can easily see stuff on the Facebook post. And, um, if you just tag me in and let me know that you message me, I'll, I'll reply to you, um, as soon as I can. But other than that, guys. Let's get ready for tomorrow. Hopefully it's a, a green day, not a red day, but red days are still buying opportunities for us to hold for some breakouts. So don't hesitate on that too. But hopefully it's green for all of us. We make some money and, you know, keep on keeping on. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Stay green.